REPL Driven Development is the foundation to working successfully with Clojure. The REPL is an instant feedback workflow that continually runs your code. The REPL contains a live application to interact with. When developing Clojure, the first step is to start the REPL process, then write a Clojure expression and send it to the REPL. The REPL then reads that expression and evaluates it, returning the result and giving instant feedback. To start a REPL, open the terminal application and run the closure command, specifying the name program to run. This starts a REPL process and shows a prompt waiting for your code. This REPL configuration is using the REBEL readline project, giving a highly interactive development experience. Closure expressions are typed or pasted at the prompt. Let's add some numbers together to see how it works. Enter the expression and don't forget to close the parentheses. This code is calling the plus function with several arguments press enter to get the result. The REPL saves the history of the code entered at the prompt. Use the up and down arrows to navigate that history and run the same code again, or edit a previous expression, saving time typing it all out again. Let's change the expression to multiply all its arguments. And there we go, we get a new result. Let's try a few different expressions to get a better flavor of using the REPL. Rebel readline shows the signatures of functions as a reminder of the arguments to pass to that function. Here we can see that the map function takes uh, various different arguments. So we can use a function, a function with a collection, a function with uh, several collections. Here we're going to just use the ink function and just use a single collection. And don't forget to close the parentheses and we get the result. So it's very easy to create these single expressions, evaluate them to see how they work. And then we can slowly start building up our program by combining these uh, expressions. Let's try generating some data. I'm going to create a combination lock with three tumblers. And we can see that we're getting help as we're entering the code. It's telling us the arguments of that function. And we can also enter the code onto multiple lines and Rebel Readline will automatically indent, making the code more readable. So we're creating three tumblers that are going to generate the numbers of 0 to 9, and we'll return all the combinations of those tumblers as a vector. Close the parentheses and hit return. If we get an error, we can use the history to go back and go and change the code so that it's correct. Now we can see the output is generated all the combinations. Each combination is a vector, and the collection of combinations is a list. This is a little bit hard to read, so we can use the closure pretty print library and the result will be printed in a more human friendly form. So we go back in history and add the pretty print around the for function. And we can press tab for completion of names. And we can see that we've got pretty print and we've got a few options there. We're going to go for pretty print, p print. And don't forget to close the parentheses. You can see there's an indication there that it's matching the starting parentheses. Then we see the combinations in a much easier form to read. Combinations where we're repeating the numbers are not that secure. So we could add a condition in the code to avoid repeating numbers in the same combination. So we'll go back to the expression using the history, using the up arrow. And inside the for iteration, we're going to add a when clause. This conditional checks that no two tumblers have the same number and put all three combinations together. And we make sure that uh, no combination has the same number repeated. Now you can see that instead of 999 being the last number, we've got 987, and it's not repeating any of the numbers anywhere else. Rather than show all the combinations, we can also get a count of how many combinations there actually are. Let's go back in history. So a count will take a collection, which is the result of the four iteration, and we can see there's 720 combinations. If we go back to the expression where we are just using all the combinations, and we see the count is actually a thousand. See the video on data browsers for more ways to visualize data with the closure REPL. As well as the function signatures, we can also show a description of the function using that function's document string. So if we want to know what ink does, we can type the name and press Control X, Control D, and we get a description of the function along with its signature, and this is part of the function's document string. If we're not sure what a function is called, we can use Control X, Control A, and it runs a fuzzy search on the name and shows all the functions with similar names. Here we can see there are a lot of functions with the name 
map. So it's useful to be specific which one you're referring to. We can actually use tab and it will allow us to navigate through all the functions that start with that name. And we can press uh, Control L to clear the REPL screen. There is a set of help commands under the REPL menu. So if you type colon REPL and press tab, you can see all the help commands, or you can just type in help and it will list all the commands and configurations that are available for REPL readline. Currently I'm using the Vim uh, key bindings. You can also set Emacs key bindings as well. Okay, that's it for a brief introduction into programming in the REPL. I hope you found that useful. Thank you.